and we need to make sure that we start recording. All right. So pursuant to the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A, section 18, this meeting of the Disability Access Advisory Committee is being conducted via remote participation. I'd like to begin by um, conducting a roll call. So I'll just um, ask people to make sure that they can hear and be heard and to mute themselves afterwards. So I'll begin with the chair. Myra Ross. Okay. Present. All right, Elise. Here I am, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, Saren. I'm here. All right, and Tori. I'm here. All right. I want to remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded to the web and could be shown on Amherst Media and broadcast on the town of Amherst YouTube channel. Um, um, and Chair, if you'd like to call your meeting to order, I have 1131 as the time. Okay. And there are some attendees that I think I can move over. Uh, uh, so there are two of the uh, town councilors are in the attendance and um, one community member. Um, and let me, and oh, I, I, can, see. I see Marty is there. So let me promote her to a oh, panelist. Great. Okay. Okay, um, I will call the meeting to order. It's a packed agenda. So I want it, um, we can go to announcements, but I wanna make 4E into an announcement because we might not get that far. And what it is, is there are two statewide meetings that are going to be held for any members of commissions on disabilities from anywhere in the state. One's on July 19, one's on August 31. You have to sign up and we can send, um, if you haven't received it already, Pamela sent it a while back, but I just wanna bring it to people's attention that you can sign up to go to these, um, there are three hour meetings of people from different disability com uh, committees. They said the um, agenda is gonna be the same for both. So you can choose one or the other, or if you wanna go to both, you can. But if, um, so we'll send that out again so you can register. Registration for the July 19th is before July 5th and we will not meet again before then. So I wanted to bring it up. Um, the first thing um, on the agenda is for us to talk about proposed legislation for accessible trails. And we have a presenter, Meg Bandara. Is the, are you here? I am, yes, thank you. Excellent, okay. So um, I have to say that initially I was very excited and about this and I still am, but the information that you sent is completely inaccessible, which is sort, sort of ironic since oh, the trail so is supposed to be accessible. So, so accessible <laughs> trails are great, but right. if you could read about them, it would be better. <laughs> so I use Keynote, which has accessible features, but apparently when it translates to a PDF, even though there's a checkbox to keep it accessible features included, apparently it isn't. So I can send you the original version. I'm so sorry about that. I didn't realize that what, the accessibility What's a keynote? Features. What's a keynote file? Is it a Key, text file? It's a uh, presentation file. It's it's Mac's version of um, uh, PowerPoint. Oh, okay. I don't, but, I probably can't read that because I don't have Mac. But, but anyway. I'm also happy to provide a text version. I didn't realize that. I would love it as a text features. version. Great. I will do that. I'm so I thought it was pretty that. funny that an accessible uh, trail presentation. Well, is it's not, it's not very funny. It's really horrible <laughs> that it doesn't translate. <laughs> well, I would use that word too. But okay, yeah. now we got that out of the way. You want to <laughs> tell us about it? Uh, I mean, I wish I were more prepared, but I couldn't read it. Sure. Um, yeah, and I'm happy to send it over um, as soon as we're done today, honestly. So okay. um, let me just go through the general things about the bill. Um, so I founded Unpaved Trails for All, which is a grassroots advocacy group that started with trying to just get an unpaved accessible trail in Northampton. And we've grown to do federal and state advocacy. Um, and the reason I'm here today is because there is a bill up 
um, in the state legislature for consideration, which is called an act um, expanding access to trails for people of all abilities. And it's S.446. Excuse me one second. Could everyone other than Meg please mute? Because there's background noise. Okay, so, come on. Okay, great. So it's S.446 in the Senate and H.769 in the House. And the bill was originally presented by Senator Comerford, and it has now been given to the Joint Committee on Environment and Natural Resources um, for a hearing. Um, so the most common type of trail that we do have in the state that's accessible are the rail trails, and probably the least common type we have that are accessible are unpaved or water trails. Um, this bill would look at all types of trails in the state. And when you're thinking about accessible trails, this is an issue that really covers um, public health, environmental justice, and equity. Uh, the public health portion of this is that we have heard over and over again, study after study, that green space is healthy space. Um, and it improves things like physical um, and mental well being, and it reduces stress. But those are particularly important for people living with disabling conditions because we are, um, we generally score lower on quality of life and standard of living measurements than our peers without disabling conditions. And statistically speaking, um, if you have limited mobi mobility, you are far more likely to suffer a stress-related illness than your non-mobility limited peer. So um, stress reduction and quality of life are things that we know that nature can help a lot with. But it also turns out that green space isn't all created equal. So the less built the environment feels, the more stress relief studies are showing that we get from spending time in that space. So when you have things like parks and paved trails, those are nice spaces, but we probably don't get as much stress relief as we would if we were in more natural spaces. Um, when you look at this issue of access on trails through an environmental justice lens, it really is just that all residents should have access um, to these health and well-being benefits and that access to nature is just really a human right. Um, and then in terms of equity, we're really talking about most of the time public land. And if it isn't public land, it's land that's being developed um, using public funding. So access is really also a civil rights issue. Um, and it's not just a few people in Massachusetts, 33 to 47 percent of the state's population could benefit from accessible trails. That's 17% who are seniors, 11 to 25% who are under age 65 and living with a disabling condition, and then children who are under age five whose parent or caregiver or family member is often using something like a stroller, which has wheels, or a carrier, or the children themselves um, have limited mobility range or balance. And that's about 2.3 to 3.2 million people in the state. Um, and then some of the reasons why we need a bill to address access on trails. Um, we have about 4,000 miles of unpaved recreation trails in our state parks, but only seven and a half miles are currently accessible. Um, information about accessible trails is really hard to find or it's just non-existent. And then even on rail trails, which are considered accessible spaces, access can still be improved in lots of ways. And our funding doesn't really reflect the um, population and our needs, and it isn't really addressing access on trails in an equitable way. So um, there are also a lot of stereotypes about trails. So we're not all, we're not always getting high quality trails when we're getting accessible trails. Um, and then the bill itself, if it's passed, would develop um, a working group, which would really importantly to me be comprised of at least a third of its members being people living with disabling conditions because we just don't have a seat at that table normally. And it would also mandate that the group be diverse, both um, racial and ethnically, but also um, in the location. So coming from different parts of the state, which I think is always important for all of us here in Western Mass, we recognize. Um, and then the working group has timelines built in to the bill, which I think are also important. So the goal of the bill overall would be to increase the amount of accessible trails within three years and also increase the dollars going towards accessible trail projects within three years. 
Um, and to do that, it also has some timelines that are baked in, which would be um, within three months of the bill passing, the working group would be established. Within 12 months of the working group being established, their report would be due, and then the DCR would be required to respond to that report. And then again, that three years time of having increased trails and increased trail dollars. Um, what I'm asking for today is really just this committee's formal support in terms of a letter that would go to the chairs of the committee that's reviewing the bill. And um, then also, if you would like to take it, your support a step further, we have framework language that you could introduce to your local government so that your local government, your town council could pass a resolution that also says that Amherst supports the bill. Um, and then there are lots of ways you could help as an individual. If you're here and you're interested, you could sign the petition, which is on our website, which is on paytrailsforall.org. Um, you can also, we're always looking for advocates to help. So you can also be an advocate if this issue is important to you. So I'm happy to take any questions and also to say that Representative Dome is also a co-sponsor of this bill. I have a question too. Um, I guess hey. I'm unmuted now. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. yep. Yes, we yep. can hear you now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, have, okay, Elise, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, question. My question is: This is sounds wonderful, but how does one with mobility um, issues? How does one get to these trails, to the accessible trails? Right, so that's definitely an issue that <laughs> this working group would look at because that's a problem. Mm -hmm. in, all, in all of Western Massachusetts, I only know of one trail that can be accessed by public transportation. Um, mm -hmm. And that is not even just the bus service route, it is a special request stop. So um, accessing through public transportation is definitely a problem that the working group would, I hope, look at and address. Um, but then in yeah. general, also just having information available about the trails in an easy to find way so that you can get to them um, through private transportation. Hmm. Okay. Does, your, um, does the material you sent us include a, a response that you just gave us to Elisa's question? No, but I can send it. Yeah, that's an important thing. If you have like for me, um, I'm legally blind and I have a guide dog and I rely on public transportation and if I can't get to the, I would love to walk on these trails, but if I can't get to them, <laughs> you right. know. Right. It's and I'm sure right. other people have issues too. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's absolutely a problem. Getting to a trail independently is definitely a problem. So um, the trail at um, the old Mount Tom park, whatever the mm -hmm. state is calling it, that's the only trail that can be accessed through a special request um, mm -hmm. public transportation route. Um, this is Tori. Tori, um, I can't find my raise hand, sorry. Um, and I've been to the Silvio Conte, um, the Fort River yep. Trail mm -hmm. yep. in Hadley, and you can take PVTA there. Um, you, the address is not, quite right, but if you see, I had to explain to them how to get there. Um, and also that's an issue because Moody Bridge Road now is blocked off so you can only access right. it from one direction. So it, it's difficult, but I have been able to get there. So, But you have to explain to the bus driver, which- <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. yeah. And, I'm out. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Tori, do you um, find that trail to be completely accessible? It's not. Oh. It's not. It is when they keep it up. Yeah. Great. <laughs> but yeah. but um, they need to put more um, product down. I'm not sure what you call it. It is not pavement. It's not pebbles either. No, it's um, sort of dirt. It's kind of. I don't even know. I guess you could call it dirt. Um, it's gray. Um, and uh, also the, so it sinks 
so there's lips on the um the wooden walkways when you um when you're walking on them so if you're not careful you could trip but they do have um the guide for someone who is blind or low vision with or walking with a um a walking a stick the white cane um can knock it and then know that you're getting close to the edge however some of those are broken as well i went in um i guess it was april um and and it is in it needs some more repair they are working on it you can see that they've replaced things but it needs more repair yeah and, and i think that trail has suffered um since the pandemic with the increased interest in use outside um yeah. that's one of the most popular trails and i think yeah. that again goes back to the need for more trails and more of these spaces so that they don't get so beat up because it, the accessibility filters or is non-existent as soon as the maintenance starts to become an issue. And it's also and a federal um, it trail. Is. It's not a state trail. It is. Hmm. And that's and a crushed stone surface, which is a, um, a pretty typical accessible surface for trails. Just, I'm sorry, I'm speaking out of turn. Elise again. No, you're not. Um, Go ahead. Um, so some of these trails also bicyclists tend to go on some of these things is is this accessible trail are they going to allow that because people so, with mobility issues often can't deal with with cyclists right so one of the things about unpaved trails is that they're for pedestrians only so no bicycles okay. only um walkers You'd hikers and mobility equipment obviously um You'd but be surprised. <laughs> I know. They um, don't follow rules. Yeah. Right. So that's one of the things that's actually happening on the bike trails is there's definitely conflict between especially more high higher speed use, yeah. electric bike use. So people are looking for spaces that are bike free. So unpaved trails, which we need more of, would be bike free spaces. Good. So from yeah. us, you want a letter of support. Mm -hmm. So can you send us something? about, you know, as I said, what you sent is not accessible. So um, we would need information about to whom we should send it, uh, about who the principal players are. You said that Elisa's question about how to get to the trails is not addressed in your PowerPoint, in, in the materials that you've, that, that have gone to the legislature. Where is that? Because she asked a very important question, and I'm not sure where you are right, that. so that would be something that would be specifically addressed by a working group after the bill would be passed, but I'm happy to send um, my response to that. So basically the bill would create a working group that would look at all of these questions because no one's really looking at all of these questions and looking at the trail system as a whole. And then they would provide a report that would give recommendations on areas where accessibility can be improved or areas where we're not even addressing accessibility right now. Okay, so this has been proposed. So what is the calendar by which we need to work so we can? So I can't really answer that question because the way this system works when a bill is brought to the state, it gets assigned to a committee, which is the right now the Joint Committee on Environment and Natural Resources, which is where a letter would go to and they have a hearing about a bill, but we only get about a week's notification when something comes up for a hearing. It could be any time between a week from now till the end of the year, basically, is what I've been told. Okay, so, so time is, could be of the essence. I wanna right. tell you that we have at this meeting two people from the town council who are here. Um, so they're hearing this conversation. We have an official liaison who could take this um, to the town council if we ask her to. And there is another member of the town council who's here. Um, so they are hearing this presentation at the same time that we're hearing it. And um, so is there any, um, does anyone wanna make a motion about whether or not the DAAC should support this project? Uh, this is Tori and I'd like to make a motion to support the project. 
This is okay. Ian, and I'll second that motion. Fabulous. Okay. So is there any more discussion about it or can we vote and move on? Further discussion? Meg, I just have a question. You said it moved into the joint committee. Um, what was the name of the joint committee again? Is that in the paperwork? I don't remember that. It is, it is. And it'll it is. also be in the text only version I send, but it's the joint okay. committee on environment and natural resources. Environment and, and actual resources? Natural. natural resources. Natural, okay. <laughs> yeah. You're hard to understand. Okay, thank you. Okay, so are we ready to vote? Yes. Yes. Okay. All in favor of the motion to support the thing for access, the, mo the motion for accessible, unpaved accessible trails, say yes. 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 Okay. Yes. So I heard Tori, I heard Elise, I heard Saren. I didn't hear you heard Ian. Me. Are you voting? Marty. Oh, Marty's here. I heard you. Okay. I didn't hear Ian. Ian's a yes also. Okay. And is Cody here? No. Cody's no. not here. Um, okay. But, so we have um, six. Yes. Um, but Councillor DeAngelis has her hand oh, raised. Okay. Great. Go ahead, Pat. Yeah, I'm kind of breaking the rules. Um, I wanted to say that I would be happy to uh, co sponsor with you a resolution in the council uh, if, you know, so that DACA would be the community sponsor. Um, and we and so I just wanted to make sure I also got the material um, so that I could work with that. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, that's great. So Meg, if you can send us the text version, that would be terrific because then we'll yes. send at least I would know what to do with it. And yes, at least would do. Okay. This is mm -hmm. great. Thank you for bringing this. Um, you know, it is great to go outside, you know, and it is more stressful to walk on the bike path than to walk um, in, like even at Silvio Conti, there's something about it that that is just really cool. And there are a couple other places that I can get to because my husband drives, but, you know, what was, you know, there are so many trails full of rocks and roots and treachery um, that more unpaved trails is just fabulous so thank you thank you very much thank you all right so now we can move to let me see what um let's see okay wait i gotta get to it um the variance application for the drake um Okay, my understanding, just to cut to the chase of this, I think John Kuhn is here representing um, the petitioner. And it, my understanding is that the building inspector approved of this and you are now going to the state board for what reason? because it sounds to me like you made ma many attempts to make this accessible and to not only audience people coming in, usually when people make things accessible, they think in terms of the audience coming in and they don't ever think in terms of people with disabilities actually being the presenters or performers. So there are stages all over that are not accessible and it seems to me like that was one of your primary goals in doing this to make sure that you considered that people with um, mobility impairments would want to get onto the stage. And for that, I really thank you because that is not typical. Um, so I don't understand the reason for the request for the variance because the building inspector approved it. So can you get to that part, John? Sure. In the interest uh, of time. I'd be happy to. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is John Kuhn. I've lived in Amherst for 48 years. I uh, was founder of Kuhn Riddle Architects uh, and uh, am currently uh, vice president of the Downtown Amherst Foundation, the DAF, which is the organization that runs the Drake. Um, as you probably know, the Drake has been open for 
uh, since last April, so over a year. Um, and we knew at the time that we were opening that we would have to make the entire facility uh, accessible um, because it's a change of use and it's a large enough project. The, the main door is accessible from renovations that were done in the 90s, but the interior of that space originally was a bank and then it was uh, the high horse for a while. And now we converted it into a, a performance venue. Um, when we, uh, the entire space is accessible, we knew that the stage should be accessible, um, but we also realized that because of the shape of the room and, and uh, the configuration of the space that it would be very difficult to put a, a permanent ramp in that was there all the time. Uh, so we thought about how we might do this and our concept was to create what we're calling a retractable permanent ramp. In other words, it's a ramp uh, that is 16 feet long because the stage is 16 inches high and it's stored under the stage. And we pull it out whenever there's a requirement. And there's two, two types of requirements. One would be when a performer uh, requests that. Um, that has happened once in this past year where a, a guitarist for a punk rock band uh, was in a wheelchair. So we put, put that uh, the, the ramp up at his request. And the second time is whenever there's some kind of public uh, performance where somebody from the public might get up on the stage. An example would be our open mic, mic nights uh, once a month. Um, so we felt that this was, a, this was really meeting the spirit of um, the code, the, the accessibility code in that the stage, which is not a public space, but is a space that can be used on, on certain occasions. And we make the stage accessible on those occasions. So we, we um, presented this concept to uh, Rob Moore, the building commissioner, and he thought it was a good idea and accepted it. And that is how we constructed the stage with a storage area underneath. We bought a commercial ramp. I don't know if any of you have seen it in place, but uh, we put it up when is required. Um, so this was uh, questioned, I guess there was a complaint made to the state that we didn't have a, a ramp. Um, and we had a meeting, uh, actually Ms. Young was there, Ms. Moiston was there with, uh, with a fellow named uh, Jeff Dugan from the state. And uh, he thought the ramp was great, but he felt like we should get a variance from the AAB. Um, and so that meeting was on March 27th. We submitted a, uh, a, an application for variance request um, on June 6th, and that goes to the AAB. And in doing so, uh, appli the, the application has to be copied to the building commissioner, uh, to your committee and to Stavros. And so that is why you have received this request. I also wanna okay. thank you for seeing, uh, that was just submitted uh, about a week ago, and we appreciate that you've been able to uh, put us on your agenda so quickly. Uh, we have not been scheduled for a hearing yet, but there will be a hearing uh, at the state level uh, once they've done, gone through their process. So you, your uh, uh, disability committee is really looking at, um, at this request because it's gone to the state and uh, we would like your support on this, of course, but that is, uh, that's the reason it's before you, Myra. Okay. Um, do any uh, DAAC members have any questions for John Kuhn? This is Tori, and I have a question. Um, yep. Is it posted anywhere if, for the public to see that you have the uh, accessible ramp? Um, I don't know that it's posted anywhere. Um, it's there if the public is there and is able to go up on the stage. And it's um, all, it's uh, something that's presented to any performer that uh, signs a contract to come in. So they they certainly are aware of it. They know. Okay. And does the drink have I realize, a website? I, yeah, I realize that it's um, not a public space, but my recommendation would be that you post on your social media and your your website mm -hmm. yeah. um, that you have a portable ramp that's available upon request sure um, and and that that will help um 
alleviate this yes issue that um, Good suggestion thank you you're welcome if I may, we have a facilities packet that goes out to all agents, managers, and performers that we're working with, and it is included in our facilities. It tells everything about our facility, how the stage works, how big our stage is, what our backline is, um, our production manager's contact, et cetera. So that is part of what we send out to anybody who's looking to perform at the Drake. Um, and when we do host our open mic nights, which is the night that it is, it's the only night that the stage is open to the public. Um, we do, um, we have on social media posted pictures of the ramp and the stage in use with the ramp, but we can do more. Absolutely. Could you identify yourself, please? Sorry, Sorry Gabrielle. I'm oh, Gabrielle. Gabrielle. Okay, cool. Yes, okay. Gabrielle Gould. All right, excellent. Um, okay, so um, you do put it in the packet. It is on the social media. And if it could just generally be on the website for people's general information, that would be terrific. Does anybody have any questions about the ramp? I mean, if the man in the wheelchair who uses, uh, who wanted to perform was able to use it, it is probably quite fine. It's a commercial ramp. And so the first question is, there were two questions for them. One of them has to do with the lower handrail and the other one has to do with, do we think it's okay in general for you to have a ramp? Is that what you want to know? Yes, whether the uh, the retractable ramp is accessible is uh, acceptable, and then uh, there's a second item that we asked the request for. This is was at Mr. Dugan's um, request, and that is the fact that um, the code requires two two rails uh, on a um, a ramp, a, a higher a upper ra uh, rail and a lower rail, and the lower rail. Uh, it's, it, they're both supposed to be continuous. Our upper rail is continuous, but because this is a commercial ramp um, and because the way it's constructed, the, the lower rail is interrupted by vertical supports every so often. I don't think it really affects the use of the ramp by anyone, um, but since uh, it was noted by Mr. Dugan, we felt we should also put that as a second request in our- How far uh, apart are the verticals? They're two foot eight apart. And oh. the ramp is 16 feet long. Okay, so almost three. So there's about six of them. Yes. Okay. What's All it right. made this, of? Yeah. Would if I could share my screen, um, I would be able to show you images um, of the ramp, see. so you could could all see see. Almost. Done. I don't know how to share my screen though. Okay. Almost. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. All right. I I have to give you permission and. Um, Myra, I just wanted to point out that Marty has her hand hand oh, up. Okay. Okay. So while she's doing that, Marty, go ahead. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say, John, I thought this is a very elegant solution to a, a very difficult problem. Your space is pretty small. You don't have a lot of space when and you lose a lot of seats when you pull the ramp out. But having and yes, it doesn't meet the the letter of the state law. But it does meet the ADA by um, by giving an alternative solution. And the way that you're operating the Drake, um, I think, solves it meets all of the requirements of the ADA, if not the letter of the state law. And that lower handrail, I don't know who uses that. Right. You know, <laughs> it's it's sort of a it's a very difficult problem. I know I've struggled with it for years, um, getting that lower handrail continuous when you need to have it standing by itself, like in this situation. So I think you've done an excellent job on this. Thank you. Do you want to make a motion, Marty? Yeah, I'll make a motion that the um, DAAC um, approve these details and uh, this variance. And I would say these are real details and it's right for the Drake to come forward to have this variance on file so that there won't be a problem um, if someone goes to the DOJ about it. Okay. Meyer, before you um, ask the committee for um, additional comments, I did want to point out that you do have 
uh, members of the public uh, uh, in the in the audience. So I don't know if you want to have public comment or we want to hold. Um, if there's someone in the community who uh, who wants to make a public comment, it would be limited to three minutes, um, and um, we could you know we could do that. Okay. Um, Our, who is there, here? There is a person. There's a person with the, that they're um, with their yeah. hand up. So, uh, well, actually, before we do that, can we see the the presentation? Can we see okay. Gabrielle's okay. screen first? Yeah. And then okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I have. Okay, Gabrielle, go ahead. Maya, I have a question. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Right. So, um, what I do, I use a wheelchair, as you all know. When I go up a ramp, I pull myself, not just my by my wheels, but uh, grabbing the railing. So, and then going down the hill, going down the ramp, I also have my hands on the rail. So, I mean, I have to, in a case like that, I have to make sure that I'm not blocked by these uh, mm. vertical bars. So that was just one concern, but I can hold on to my wheels, but sometimes, you know, I get, I feel like I'm getting a better grab by clinging onto the rails. So I don't know if others have experienced similar situations or is it just me? I don't know. Hi, this is Tori. And I was just gonna make a comment that people who are using manual wheelchairs would use the lower bar um, and that that's what it's there for. But with, with the situation at the Drake and the size, you know, what they're dealing with, it's a small area. I do think that this is, you know, a good choice. I, they really, I don't think had too much, you know, other choices because of the size of the uh, building and the area. Okay. Gabrielle, is there something that you wanted to show us from the screen? I can just describe the picture that we have up on the screen, which is the 16 foot commercial grade retractable ramp in position. Um, this retractable ramp takes two people about 15 minutes to put into place. Um, it is very sturdy and um, incredibly stable. Um, it has railings on both sides, as John Kuhn was describing, with two, a high up railing and a lower railing. Because we take the railings out and lay them flat on the ramp itself in order to put it into its garage, um, they do have the vertical supports to maintain. And I'm not quite sure if there would ever be a way that we could get a continuous line at the bottom of the ramp. The one gentleman who did perform on our stage, um, who we had the ramp up in place for upon their arrival, um, remarked that it was a the first place he's ever played at um, out of thousands of venues that their punk rock band plays in that had accessibility to the stage, um, but that it also um, was, you know, sort of everything he could have hoped for. Um, again, we only put this up when it is requested by a uh, member of a performance group that we have hired to come and play at the Drake or for our open mic nights, which are open to the public. Um, we also do several high school fundraising evenings for their school music program with jazz um, orchestra and um, the fine arts center, the, the entire performing arts. Um, and we always ask the faculty there if they have any students that will need any accommodations and have this up in place for them as well. Um, so that is the description of the, the image on the screen that we're showing you now. Um, I'm bringing it now to a, um, as if you were entering the ramp in, uh, in a wheelchair or walking up it point of view. So you can also see how the handrails work. Um, and again, as Mr. Kuhn said, it is a 16 foot ramp, one inch per one foot per one inch of grade. So it is completely, um, up to ADA, ADA standards. And now this is an image of it as if you were coming off the stage and going down into the audience. 
Any questions for me on these? Um, it's Elise here. I just want to comment that this is, I want to thank you guys for doing this because I think it's also going to set an example for other venues. I, I just think this is really wonderful. Thank you. I also did want to point out um, on the Drake's website, we have an FAQ page and um, you'll see here um, one of the questions, one of the frequently asked questions is, is the Drake ADA compliant slash handicapped accessible? And the answer is yes, 100% accessible throughout entrances, exits, bathrooms, even the stage. Everyone has full access to the Drake. And that was part of our mission when we were building this venue for the community. Okay. So Thank it you. is on your website. It is. <laughs> okay, great. So uh, Marty made a motion. We didn't get a second. Um, I just want to make sure we have the details. So do we have a second to Marty's motion? I'll so, a little second. Or okay. I thought you were going to hear from uh, public comment. Ah, okay. I am, okay. but I wanted to make sure we got a second. So right. if we have public comment that is pertinent to the accessibility of um, this ramp, um, that would be great. All right. I don't know who is present. So, um, so I'm, I'm gonna bring in the first person and promote them to a panelist and I will do the timing for three minutes. Okay, thank you. All right. So let's see if I can figure out who the people are. Okay. Oh, whoops. I'm, <clears throat> my name is Vera Cage. <clears throat> I'd like to make a public comment, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Thank you. Um, and is it Chair Myra Ross? Yes. Hi. Um, thank you also for your uh, service at the uh, Amherst Public Schools. Um, oh, <laughs> okay, different, had, different life, okay. Exactly, I've had children um, that have gone through the school system. I live in Amherst, Massachusetts, and I am the resident that has um, put forward the complaint um, to the state um, in regards to um, the the Drake and the stage and the uh, ramp situation. I was pretty aggrieved when um, learning that Hazel's Blue Lagoon across the street, the building commissioner um, gave them such a hard time with um, their ramp, um, making sure that it needed to be permanent, that it needed to be constructed in certain um, specificities. Um, and so when I frequented the Drake, um, I noticed that there wasn't a ramp. And I was able to pull um, Paul Balkeman, the town manager, to ask him, and he was able to immediately um, find the architect, uh, Mr. Kun, who, who gave some remarks earlier. And he said, you know, it would be too big and bulky and we'd lose a lot of seating. Of course, as a business, um, you don't want to lose um, space that could be, uh, you know, make you money. Um, and that was my concern that there were these two unequal treatments, um, right? And and be, and I want to put race into it as well. Um, you know, Hazel's Blue Lagoon is owned by two black men, or it is a black owned business. And across the street, you know, you have the Drake that received over three hundred thousand dollars of ARPA money to do a whole gutting and rebuild. So it's not like you know, this has been around and, you know, the state laws came in. Um, the building commissioner knew what he was doing because it was, you know, part of the uh, requirements to open. And so I was really surprised that um, the building commissioner was able to approve the opening of the Drake without any stipulations to putting forward a variance application with the state. So this is very unusual. I would um, like to remark that, you know, this variance is coming over a year after the Drake has been fully operating. And so if I didn't put forward my complaint, um, we wouldn't have this conversation. And so, you know, this is probably outside of your purview to, to, to consider matters of justice. Um, because, you know, if, if one business was forced to have a permanent ramp, why wasn't the Drake forced to do the same, especially when it received so much of federal and public money, right? That's, that's 
pretty unusual. Um, you know, Hazel's spent a lot of money to do what they were needed to do in order to comply with regulations. And so we have a tale of two cities, unequal treatment, and what your vote is going to is is going to be widely publicized. You're setting a precedent for this town, for this commonwealth. What you do as a community that's charged with representing folks with disabilities. You're at time, so if you'll just okay finish. I will wrap up. My concluding remark is that before you vote, consider who you represent. And it's not about profit or money. It is about the people that may want to come to the stage and be welcomed, no matter if they are you know, with a wheelchair or with um, a walker. If there's somebody in the stage that the performer wants to bring up, they should be able to come on. That's what happens during these evenings where we are having a good time and celebrating. No one wants to stop the show. You're at time. Thank I'm you. Sorry. Thank you. No, I appreciate the comment. Um, I, I guess I want to say that, first of all, our role in this is not to make a decision. The decisions are made by the Massachusetts Arch Architectural Access Board. We have advisory opinions. Sometimes they listen and sometimes they don't. Um, we have had very strict, uh, serious concerns about the accessibility of things before that were approved by them. So um, I think, you know, I, the, the, the question of justice is a good question. It doesn't belong here. And if the other venue, um, you know, I, I, we have to deal with the question that has come before us. Um, we don't know anything about the accessibility needs or the accessibility um, work that was done at the other venue at all. It never came to us for approval because they didn't ask for any variances. This is a request for a variance um, that was suggested by someone from the Massachusetts Office on Disability. Mr. Dugan, we know um, he has come to our meetings and he is the representative of the disability community. So in a way, I'm very glad that you brought the complaint because it does ask them to get a variance. And it does, I mean, he asked them to get two variances. Um, and I think that is the way to go about it. Um, but the justice issue is beyond our purview. We don't know a thing about the other, uh, the other venue unless we happen to know personally, but it's never come to us. Um, so I think, you know, thank you for bringing the point and Frankly, thank you for bringing the question of um, the variance um, because someone from the state did think they need a variance and they have applied for one. And our job is to decide whether the, the recommendation that they are making is something that we can support for people with disabilities to be able to use the facility. That's all we are charged with and we don't have final decision making. Um, so is there any more discussion about- uh, We have um, one other hand raised oh, for public, public okay, comment. I'm sorry. I, okay. yeah, that's all right, I'll, I'll bring that person okay. in now. Okay. Uh, let's see, let me go back. So. Okay, they should be coming in. When you come in, could you identify yourself, please? Can people hear me? Yes. yes. Awesome. Three minutes. So well, first of all, my name is Pat Ananibako, and I want to thank members of DAA see for your time serving on the committee. I'm here to represent my group, Black Business Association of Amherst Area. And I am urging you not to support the variance application that Drake has sub submitted to the state. 
The reason being that Hazel, that is run by two black men, were not given the opportunity or given the information. They too had small space. I will urge you to please reach out to Hazel before you make your decision. Do not vote today. Your vote of yes will send a very strong message to black owned businesses in our town. To do the right thing by requiring that Drake should have a permanent ramp. Disability is a justice issue. Racism is a justice issue. And I can go on, on and on. So the community is watching you. Your action today, what you're going to vote on, I urge you to please do your diligent work before you vote. There is no rush on this. Drake has one year to have put in the variance. If you're waiting for the diligent work of a community member, Vera, we won't be here today discussing this. Please do the right thing. Black lives matter in our town. If we're talking about equity, inclusion, and diversity, this is an, an example of that. Drake received $300,000 of upper fund to renovate and uh, for operating expenses of their business. So the, the public has right to give input of that business. If, they, if, if it's a private business, then don't, don't collect money from, 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 from tax, tax dollars, period. That's all I have to say. And I want to echo everything that Vera has said. Please do not vote yes. You will be driving Black-owned businesses out of our town. If Hazel doesn't get up a fund, just like Drake, they will no longer be in existence in our town. Is that what we, what we want? I used to run a restaurant in Amherst. And I know I experienced racism during permitting process. No surprise why businesses are thriving in Hadley. I own some businesses in Hadley. Do the right thing. I thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Does anyone on the committee have any um, further, anything further about the request and about Marty's motion? Um, Myra, this is Ian. Um, Go ahead. Ian. I was just going to say, um, so I, this is my uh, second meeting on the committee, um, and I appreciate the presentation earlier, um, and I hadn't been aware of uh, the reason for the, the uh, call for, for um, the variance being, or, or the call to the state for, for the variance, um, and, but, but I, I did just want to say in terms of um, uh, what what you had said earlier about justice not being an issue for this committee, um, I think disability justice the the phrase disability justice comes in particular from uh, uh, black and and people of color activists working for ju disability justice and um, and and so when we consider the role of, of disability advisory disability access advisory. Um, there's both the, like the permitting process, but then also the the justice concept around it. Um, and so, um, I guess I I would put in a motion just to maybe postpone at least for a month so that we can uh, do our due diligence and and learn more about the the background to this to to what we've just heard about today. So um, I'm public comments. Uh, All I can say, we're not meeting in July. We're going to uh, Northampton. So it would have to be August that you so were I, proposing. I just want to make that clear. 
And I and I also want to point out that um, when I looked at the time frame for response, it's generally within a two week period. So that's one reason why we tried very hard to get the the um, variants onto this agenda, um, uh, and why I think the DAAC has missed some responses in the past. The the AAB gives gives each of the respondents uh, two weeks to respond. So if 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 no vote is taken today, that's um, you will. Uh, I mean, you can still respond, but they may have already gone ahead with their decision making process. Thank you, Pamela. Does anyone on the committee have any additional comments to make? Meyer, um, could I make two comments, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, just addressing a couple of the points that were made. <clears throat> uh, when we applied for our building permit, Mr. Mora, the building commissioner, did not require a variance. He didn't feel a variance was necessary. If he had, we would have applied for a variance at that time. It only came up because of the complaint. And so we have filed a variance and that's what we're doing now. But that's why we didn't apply originally. Right. And the second point is that this stage is not a public space. It's not a space that anyone can just go up on at any point in time. If this were a restaurant and we had a 16 inch platform, we'd have to have a permanent ramp that was there all the time because all tables need to be accessible. So it's not a public space. And that's really the difference between um, the requirement for other facilities that, have, that require ramps for stages or platforms. May I also add something? Go ahead, Gabriel. Uh, the complaint against the Drake on this also made complaints to the Human Rights Commission. There was a 10 page plus addendum uh, report released earlier this week, I'm sorry, last week, um, that found absolutely no impropriety of the town of Amherst, BID, the Downtown Amherst Foundation, or the Drake um, in terms of being accused of racial inequality. Uh, Rob Mora as building inspector stands by his um, original and continued designation that this ramp was completely accessible to the stage for its purposes. And we are seeking the variance because of the complaint and because we want to do the right thing. Um, the DEI Department of the Town of Amherst, uh, two members of, who are on this particular panel or on this phone, you know, the Zoom um, wrote the report. Uh, I believe it is a public report. And I think it's important for people, if you are going to hold on this, to read the report um, because they have found no um, negative impacts from our organizations nor the Town of Amherst on this particular subject about Hazel's Kitchen and the Drake. That's all. Okay, Myra. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Uh, I also I believe very strongly in fairness, and um, however, we never got a variance request from the other business. You know, with with I don't personally know which is owned by black people or um, just um, white people or Hispanics. You know, so I, those are behind everything else, but looking at the site and the review of this portable ramp, I thought that was a very good solution, but I don't know what triggered the other business not to file for variance for their own business. So in a way I look at it as it is beyond our decision as a DAAC committee, which is just supposed to look at the variance request. If we think that is doable, yes, we support that. But we don't know. And we don't know uh, what kind of grants Drake got and the other business didn't get. We have no idea. I have no idea where they were turned back and where they applied and they were refused to get the grants. So in a way, I feel like this is beyond our scope of decisions. Thank you. I'm sorry. I, are there any additional comments?
No. Well, there's a motion made by Marty, seconded by Elise, um, which pertains to this particular uh, request that has only to do with this ramp in this uh, facility. It doesn't have anything to do with anything else. And we don't, we have not, our purview is to determine whether or not this is a reasonable variance for people who use, uh, people with mobility impairments to have access to the stage. That's the only, um, that's, that's the only authority that we have. And as I said before, it isn't authority, it's just advisory. So um, are we ready to vote? Yes, no, ready to I vote? just wanna make, I just, this is Tori and I wanna make yep. one comment. And I do, I understand we're only supposed to look at the variance, but I also wanna let you know that um, it, I, I do also feel uncomfortable but I'm, I'm looking at the fact that we're just supposed to look at the variance itself and not uh, what happened with the other business because we didn't know we weren't, yeah. well, it's not that we weren't aware, but we're only supposed to look at the variance. And, but, I, but it does make me feel uncomfortable. And I, I was gonna say that I want to abstain from voting and, and I might, I might still say that, that that's the way I'm feeling. Okay. Um, I'm gonna call the vote if there are no more comments. All those in favor of approving the audience, uh, the, the variance, we'll just do it with a roll call. Uh, Elise? I think Can you come muted. back to me? I'm oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Marty. I say approve. I'm Sarah. uncomfortable with oh. it too, but yeah. I think given the facts and the way they're presented, that I approve. Sarah? I approve too. Okay, so uh, Ian? Uh, abstain. You abstain. Okay, uh, Elise, I guess we're, oh, Tori, you're abstaining? I'm. Or you're... I'm gonna abstain. Mm. Okay, hmm. Elise? Yeah, I, I'm not really comfortable either, but I'm gonna approve it. Okay, so it's up to me. I what I what I think is that anytime there's a question of an imbalance of justice, we should all be uncomfortable. The question is, does that have anything to do with this particular request, um, and whether or not the town funded it and didn't fund anyone else has nothing to do with us. Um, whether or not the other group was told that they needed to have a variance or that they needed to do something permanent. I don't know what they were told they needed to do, but they were told, um, we never heard about that business mm -mm. or about any kind of accommodation that they wanted. Um, and, you know, I suppose if the building inspector doesn't improve, approve of what you wanna do, you are, allowed to apply for a variance. That's the whole purpose of the law. So I, I think, you know, variance is, variances are granted um, and not granted by the Massachusetts Architectural uh, Access Board um, when people request them, not when they don't know anything about what's going on that they don't know about. So I feel like it is our job to decide whether or not the Drake can, that we would support the Drake 
allowing performers to use the facility the way that they have designed it. I think that is really what our job is. And anything bigger than that should concern all of us um, to the extent that, um, you know, that we are concerned, but I have not read the DEI uh, opinion, but if there was an investigation and if there is a DEI opinion, and if we are told that they that the Drake didn't do anything wrong, that doesn't even have any impact on us. The impact mm -hmm. that, you know, what what the Drake is asking for is can they continue to allow access to their stage through the temporary ramp for purposes of performers using the stage if they are not able to get to the stage by just climbing up onto it without a ramp. And um, the other issues are dealt with by other groups and we should all be uncomfortable whenever there are concerns about inequity, but this isn't a concern about inequity. This is a concern about, well, it is a concern about inequity because if they aren't allowed to use the ramp, then people, uh, I guess they would have to build a permanent ramp and I guess that, you know, undue hardship is part of the ADA. I sure. mean, that's part of the ADA. Yeah. And there, you know, when, when it came to the Chamber of Commerce um, entrance, we could not, no one on this committee could figure out a way for that entrance to be made accessible. It was gonna interfere with adjacent businesses and um, other things like that. Um, some things can't be made accessible, but some things, uh, some sometimes the business concern is um, is something that you have to think about. Undue hardship is definitely in the ADA. There are many buildings all over the place that cannot be made accessible and can't even renovate um, because they can't be made accessible. So um, I I'm okay. I'm glad that we have a business that's trying to be accessible. Anyway, we have, I'm going to vote yes. Um, okay. with, with Myra, I'm sorry to flip flop, but I'm going to change my vote to a yes. You're going sorry to, to flip. No, yeah. it's fine. You can do that. It's not been recorded. Okay. So we have one abstention and we have one, two, three, four, five. Yes. Is that correct, Pamela? No, we have two abstentions. No, I changed yeah. mine. No, so, I thought we had Ian and Ian and, and, Ian and, and, Elise, and Elise both abstained. Abstain. Yeah. Yes. Okay. No, um, I'm going to change it to a yes. Okay. I'm sorry. You can, if if that's too much trouble, then I'll still. It, no, it's no, no it, trouble. It, yeah, it's it's your we didn't decision. Vote. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, no. I mean, I there. I am uncomfortable, but I see both sides of it, and I I do feel like I need to say yes on this. Some good points were brought up. Okay. All right. So if nobody else is going to change their vote, um, then we have a vote. <laughs> One, one more chance to change your vote, anyone? Um, but it, it appears to me that we have five yeses and one abstention. Marty um, has her hand up. Yeah, Marty, go on. Yeah, um, I just wanna make a clarification on my vote. And also it may help. Um, we know exactly how the Drake is used and they have accommodated this through their operations by making sure that the ramp is up whenever there's public um, performances where the public will be on the stage. And when they're not, then they don't put the ramp up. I think one thing that was missing from the presentation today is we don't know how, at least I don't know how the space at Hazel's is used. I don't know what the purpose of the stage was for. And it's all about the operation. If, if it's always an open operation, if there were always gonna be people on the stage, then the Drake would need a permanent ramp. 
So I just want to clarify that little thing because intent is a and how you use a space uh, often defines the code requirements be, be, beside it. Bingo. I don't know whether that makes sense, yeah. but John, I think knows okay. what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I know what you're talking about too. Yeah. I know um, too. And, yeah. and, and so I just want to point out to the people from the, the other people that aren't on the committee, Marty is an architect. Marty has written many of these requests or variances um, in her day, she is now retired, but um, I, you know, she she is very aware of the law, and very aware of the nuances in the law, for which we are grateful every meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so, I I think we had a vote, um, and I'm we're going to have to move on because we're already over time for what we need to do. And we have one other thing to discuss that has to do with accessibility. But before we do that, I want to thank the people from the community who came. You're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. Um, we need to say goodbye to Tori. And of course, at a meeting where she says so much that's incredibly invaluable, it makes it much harder to say goodbye to Tori. Um, Tori is a person who has contributed a lot to this committee, com committee and who doesn't make a lot of noise. Whenever Tori speaks, you have to listen because she doesn't speak that often, but she always speaks from a perspective, perspective of knowledge and sensitivity. And I'm very sorry to see her go. And I hope that the next time we have an opportunity for you to get back on that you will, um, because I think the loss of Tori is big for us. Um, so I don't know if anybody else wants to make a comment, but if not, thank you, Tori. We um, we have a virtual cupcake. You'll have to um, imagine it. <laughs> thank you so much, Byron. Anyway, okay. So the next thing about the Jones Library, they were here uh, in. We'll April say goodbye and thank you very much. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you, John. Hi, John. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate thank your time you. Thank you, Tori. Thank you, thank everyone. You. Thank you. And thank you, Gabrielle, if she left. I don't, I don't know if she did. No, she's here. Um, I'm here. Oh, thank here. you, Mar okay. Mara. Thank you. Okay. So we have a um, Jones Library question has come up. Um, it was, uh, I in the last few weeks, they started to do the interior design on the second floor. And remember when we had them in April, they were talking about the uh, ramp and we asked all kinds of questions. It seemed a little bit like we weren't sure how the ramp was going to be demarcated and all that. And it turns out that they tried to figure out how to make the ramp, which had to be 28 feet long because of a 28 inch differential in the height between the old library level and the new library level. And to make a 28 foot ramp, they were going to have to take out over 200 square feet of space. And when they did that, they weren't going to be able to uh, have enough room for people to go to the deaf reference desk, sit at the reference desk, and also have the public seating area that they told us they were going to have. So they came to us and they said, you know, do we really need to have this ramp? Because at the head of the ramp, or at the foot, I don't remember which, there is an elevator that's going to be able to go from one level to the other. So that 28 inches will be taken care of through the elevator, which is in the same location as the lamp, a ramp. And um, we talked, Marty and uh, uh, Pamela wrote to Marty and me, primarily Marty, because she's the one who knows. Um, and um, we decided, Marty said, this is not an ADA issue that requires uh, variance because there isn't anything that they're doing that doesn't comply with the ADA. They have an elevator in the same location that will achieve the same thing as the ramp. Um, so she said, there is no, um, we don't have any anything to say here. This is completely in accordance with the law. Marty, do you wanna add anything to that? No, I think you've, I, I would add the fact that we were talking about the second floor. Right. I'd have a different feeling about it if this was the entry floor. But yeah. because it's the second floor, 
the likelihood of someone going from the second floor on one side of the building to the second floor on the this is we're talking about between the new building and the old building. Now on the second floor in the old building is the Amherst room and there's a reading room. So the frequency of people going from one of those floors to the other is not all that likely. I mean, it's not gonna be real busy as it would be if you were coming from the entryway and then going up. That's because you're likely, if you're gonna go up to the old building, in the old building, you're gonna go in the main level and go directly up to the right. to that floor. So, I mean, if again, if it was in a in a if there was a lot going on on both sides of that of that floor, I feel a lot different because there's not a lot of call for communication between those two levels. I think it's an appropriate use of an elevator, and it does meet ADA and 521 CMR. So that's why we didn't bring it here because we don't have any uh, anything to say about it really because they don't need even to apply for variance. No. Um, they were just trying to be uh, as, as, well, I can't even say as accessible because they are accessible. The, the elevator is going to achieve the goal, but they were trying to have an alternate way to achieve the goal with a ramp and they couldn't do it um, without making the library use not so good. And there's no point in having a library if you can't go to the reference desk and ask your questions. So um, there's any, I mean, we don't have anything to say about it. We just wanted to let you know about it. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank no. you for letting <laughs> us know about it. But it all makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you you are going to be able to access everything in the library with an elevator, um, and if you can walk, you can access the twenty eight inch differential by a little bit, a three steps or four steps. Um, and if you're in a wheelchair, the twenty eight inch differential you'll have to do by an elevator, which is at the location that the ramp would have been. Um, and you know, I think when you're, I guess you're putting old buildings together with new, I don't know anything about why there had to be a 28 inch differential, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna trust that architects know that, I don't know. It's floor to ceiling height. And one of oh. the floors needs to be deeper than it is. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. it's common. Okay, <laughs> so that's the story with the library. Um, and the other thing um, was, did what um, did we have anything to say about the outside? I don't know if we finished that conversation. I thought we did, yeah. but I wanted to make it possible for people to speak to that. If you, if you, the one to. question that I did not ask, but I believe the back where they're going to have seating in the back, I believe that. Uh, the material they're using was concrete or something. I can't remember, Marty, but I believe it was all up to code. Yes, like, they had some uh, pull under tables. They had some right. tables that had extensions. Yeah, right, right. My concern was my concern is what Marty brought up. I'm sorry, Myra brought up is um, that it's the it because it doesn't get much sun. Um, yeah. it'll be slippery. So hopefully they will take care of it. I mean, probably won't be sitting out there in the winter anyway, but <laughs> chances, I mean, who knows? Some people do, but um, hopefully they'll take care of it. <laughs> yeah, the walkway in the back is definitely a concern because it gets no sun. And um, it's really, I don't know whose job it is to clear it. If it's the town, if it's the library staff, I don't know if it's any of that. It would be really nice if they could afford to put some electricity under it, but that's a pipe dream. So, um, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I don't know who whose job it is to keep it cleared. But that is not 
anything again that we can have any control over that's mm -hmm. operations um and operations have to you know they have to they have to make sure that they are using their staff to make sure that everybody can get in safely um right yeah okay so we have um i think we're going to have to postpone the whole discussion of becoming a commission and it would be better to do it in the fall anyway um i think because we have to go to the town council uh about it tori do you have any parting remarks on the subject oh i'm sorry becoming a commission yeah um since we can't ask you any other time <laughs> i think it would be would be good to become a commission um it yeah it gives us more we would give you more more strength more more not strength just recognition yeah recognition yeah thank you yeah that's a good word okay <laughs> takes a village <laughs> okay all right we have two sets of minutes april and may um can we have a motion about the minutes approval move to accept okay how about um a second i'll second thank you, thank you. your last oh no you're going to get to vote um does anybody have any corrections or additions to the minutes for either no no okay thanks to pamela uh, for doing yeah, those absolutely yeah. thank you it's yes. a job i would never yeah. want um okay so uh ian how do you vote on the minutes um, I guess I'll abstain for the, the April one because I wasn't there, so I don't know, but yep. uh, I approve the May minutes. Okay, great. Uh, Tori? I can't remember if I was there in April, actually. I believe I was. Um, so I'll, I can't remember. I think you weren't here in March. Did you hear yeah, the two, two presentations from the Jones Library people? I did. There was. Yeah, so you, you were here. There was a fire alarm at some point. I just don't oh remember. yeah yeah yeah. But you were here. Okay, I forgot about that. Okay. So, um, so I will approve both. All right, Tor. Um, Saren, I approve. Elise, approved. Marty, I approve. Okay, and I approve as well. So we have the minutes approved, five to one for April. A uh, five to one. Five to one abstention, I can't speak, for April and 6th for May. Okay, so next month we are supposed to be going to Northampton on the 12th. Yes. And um, we're, we have to arrange that. Can we arrange that through email closer to the day? Yeah. Um, so Marty agreed to drive some people. Um, Saren, you will need to take a van, is that correct? Or are you gonna drive? Well, I mean, I have a van, but I cannot drive anymore. It's a different uh, van. So I have to find somebody who can drive me and so, some others. But not there. the PVTA? Well, it is a Toyota van, but it does not have hand controls anymore. Wait. Say that again. A, it is a Toyota minivan. Yeah. And uh, the only thing is it has a ramp and everything and tie downs, but it does not allow me to drive it. It's because not, it doesn't have hand controls. That's right. That's they right. broke? So, uh, so I have to find somebody who could drive me there. What I'm saying is, what about the PVTA paratransit? I can't request a service that way. Too. You can or cannot? Yeah, I can. I can. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, Saren, I Marty? just wanted to. Oh. I, this is Tori. I have a comment, and I don't know if the van that the senior center was getting um, is up and running yet, but you could check with the senior center. Oh. Maybe, they, oh, maybe that idea. van. Pamela, maybe. do you know about that van? The uh, van is up and running. Um, they have limited services, but it's worth a phone call um, to Haley to 
um, yeah. to determine if they could do it, but it is up and running. Especially yeah. if it's a thing to the Northampton Senior Center. Right. Yeah. yeah, that would be, and then we can all go and have fun in the van. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's something we have to work out. Okay. Yeah, you can get there on your own? Uh, yes. Okay, so Elise and I would need transportation from Marty. That's three, yeah. and Ian is four. With a guide and dog. Yes, and guide Cody. dog's allowed. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then there's Cody. We don't know. So we, um, I think he said he could get there. Isn't that what he said? At, At the last meeting? meeting, he did say that he could get yeah, there. Yeah, oh. I think he did say that. So. Okay. So I'm. Um, what I'll do, and there, I, I'll, I'll try to get more information and contact you all by email just with information. So it's not gonna be anything about substance. It'll just mm -hmm. be, this is what um, we're all gonna, you know, we have to be there at three o'clock or two o'clock or whatever time. And we, um, this is what they're planning. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Right. Okay. okay, thank you and all so much. Oh, before you adjourn. Um, yes. So I did have an update on the pavilion at um, Mill River. So, oh. which is oh, that um, there, there's a possibility that work will begin um, this summer. And uh, if that's the case, although you're not scheduled to meet in July, there might be a, a need for a special meeting. Um, um, to bring those plans before you, but I, those details okay. haven't been ironed out yet. So I'm just giving okay. for, for so you're forewarned. We had That's once agreed that we would do that in order to be able to have uh, whatever our voice is worth with the AAB, mm -hmm. right? So we might have to do that. Pamela, thank you for telling us this. July, of course, is one of the tough months to arrange right. an impromptu meeting very quickly. Yeah. We will have another member in July. Um, oh. I believe James Cordonier will be on the committee beginning in July. I believe that's the letter he received from Paul, right? I believe that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so um, he's, um, he's, uh, he'll be with us. Yeah. We have to contact him. Mm -hmm. So it's funny because we have one person leaving and one person coming first meeting someplace we haven't, we don't even meet in a way we don't even meet, but okay. So um do we have a motion to adjourn? Um, wait, sorry, Myra, before, before yeah. the motion to adjourn, um, can I just make a, a brief announcement yeah. to put on people's Oh yeah, room? please do. Uh, a friend and, and colleague of mine is co-facilitating a, a workshop uh, on June 28th. Um, it's called Labor and Disability Justice Towards Solidarity. Um, and just a brief description of it. Uh, Join us for Labor and Disability Justice Towards Solidarity, a people's hub circle connecting movement activists from disability and worker slash labor justice communities and those already organizing at the intersections. Uh, the increased labor organizing across a, a range of sectors, warehouse workers, baristas, nonprofit staff, higher ed, faculty, etc., has broad implications for all movements, including disability justice. Um, and I can send out a, a further description of yeah. Of yeah, the, that would be great. Please do. Uh, great. If you send that, that's oh. June 28th, uh, 7 to 9 Eastern time. Where is it going to be held? Oh, sorry, it's it's virtual. Okay. Oh, so dude. yeah, so yes, Ian, if you'll send me the information, then I will send it out to everyone. And I did want to just say um, um that Tori's always welcome back, uh, although not on the committee where you know your voice is always welcome right you can, if you want to want to spend your lunch breaks with us yeah <laughs> thank you and i just wanted to say um that i have really enjoyed my time on the committee and um i'm sorry to go but i have other um other responsibilities at work and i do have a question if so if someone from the community wanted to sit um, in the meeting, then they can sit for the entire meeting. I just want to clarify that. That yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. Yeah, there's a yeah. there's a the the meeting is posted publicly on the town website, and that 
um, will bring you um, in to the public side of the meeting um, as an attendee rather than as a participant. So, yeah. Right. I just wanted to confirm that. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. And so, since June 28th is still June, can I be included in that information yep. that Ian has just shared? Absolutely. It is. So, yeah. still a member in June. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just want everybody to know I'm not going to be available. I'm going to be at string quartet camp that week mm -hmm. so i won't even be able to get near a zoom in the middle of upstate new york but um i think that's a really great idea so i'm be interested Ian, if you want to report on it at our august meeting that would be great sure okay cool i am right. myra it, yeah see it's a thought comes to my mind I was very touched by the community speakers in the previous Drake case. I wonder if it makes sense for us to invite the owner of that hazel kitchen or whatever it was called and listen to what kind of challenges they face. But is it interfering with the town issues? itself i don't want to do that but i just want to understand what these people were very legitimately talking about is there an issue and they were discouraged for bringing a variance or they were not led to do it you know because um, maybe we should read the report that pamela's right i can i can send you the committee yeah. the report with oh. the attachments before um, we decide whether we because we don't really belong in that discussion no not at I all really, we have to keep our lanes really but, clear i think true. but what one thing is if somebody has the road in front of them that they can do a uh, request a variance if they're aware of that maybe they're not aware of that you don't know so that's why I just wanted to make sure. Well, if they have they... an architect doing work for them on a on a um, on a venue, the architect will know that they can request a variance. But, Otherwise, they really can't be a certified architect. Am I right, Marty? Yeah. But they how about, are they required to have an architect? Uh, yeah, for a public space, they mm -hmm. are. They are. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, yeah. The town should have required an, an architectural stamp. It, it was. It was. The, the, the yeah. documents are. I, I will. I'm scheduled to leave work early today, but um, I would be happy to send you all of those documents, in the report as well as all of the exhibits, which total okay. about fifty pages, including cool. the plans. Yeah. That would be interesting. Longer than the so be, and, <laughs> and I, I mean, I think there is it's the uh, the DEI commission, right? Um, so I don't know what the Civil so, Rights Commission. Right. So I um, it's interesting wearing like two different hats. Um, yeah. So in my other role as the human rights director for the Human Rights Commission, the Human Rights Commission received the complaint from uh, Ms. Cage about the uh, alleged disparate treatment between the Drake and um, Hazel's Blue Lagoon with an allegation that um, the building commissioner and um, the uh, Drake DAF um, had discriminated against them based on race. And uh, as part of that, investigation process. Uh, Jennifer and I met with all of the parties. We, um, Jeff Dugan kindly came out from um, the Mass Office on Disability and reviewed both of the premises. The ramp that is at the Drake, is at Hazel's, is a ramp that would have been required by the state for that space. The venues, um, in my opinion, are very similar. I think um, uh, the building commissioner felt that there was a distinction between the two of them, um, which is why he might have reached a different decision. 
Um, mm -hmm. Hazel's Blue Lagoon is both a restaurant and uh, a nightclub or an inner you know, an evening venue. The Drake is primarily an uh, evening venue, you know, concerts, public space. In my mind, there's not a huge difference between between the two. I do think, um, and I say this reluctantly because the architect who worked with, uh, with Hazel's is uh, not here to defend herself. I do think that there was a difference in the work or the recommendations that were made between the two businesses. So as when you look at the plans, you can see very detailed um, plans. And I think um, the, the architect probably at the request of the owner of the Drake tried to create a, a creative solution to a problem that they identified. I'm not sure that that occurred um, at Hazel's and as a result, Hazels was told to comply with the state law, which which they did. So when Jeff Dugan reviewed the ramp, he saw that it was a ramp that was fully in compliance with um, the law that would be required by the state. And mm -hmm. so that's a little bit of a, a bit of a background. But I'm I'm I can happy to send you the to send you all of those documents. Well, just for educational purposes, I'd like to understand, you know, how the building commissioner came up with that decision. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, racial disparity in treatment is real. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and the fact that the town, um, you know, I don't know if the town did anything wrong. And maybe, you know, it's like when you don't have a good lawyer, you get more trouble than if you do have a good lawyer. Yeah. You know, um, and I, I don't know who their architect was. I don't know anything about it. But if there was a possibility that a variance could have been applied for and it wasn't, that isn't the town's fault. Um, and so is that essentially the conclusion you came to? So, I mean, the conclusion that we that I came to is that the two uh, businesses had very different experiences going through the permitting process. I mean, it really is very much night and day. And I, mm. uh, my, you know, my assessment is that um, in part it's due to the backers behind the Drake having a long-term relationship with the town, a lot of experience in doing this type of work, and so. Um, as Jennifer says, like when a packet is presented from those individuals, it's, you know, it is packed up like a nice gift with a bow on top of it, where other individuals may have struggled. And I think that there are some things that the town might do um, in the future to make things easier for businesses coming into the community. I mean, it's permitting is very difficult and it's very complex. And if there are, um, I think the the owner of Hazel's felt that um, at each juncture, there was a question about something that he was doing or not doing. And he's hearing it from multiple voices because we don't necessarily have a mechanism where all of the inspectors would be there on one day and give you all of the information. So you might hear from health one day, you might hear from, you know, gas and electric to next. I'm just, you know, making this up as an example. And so that can be very frustrating if you, if, um, you know, if you're new to a community and new to, to their processes. If you've been in the community for a while and you're an established business owner and you know the process from A to Z, it's very easy for you to package your, uh, your project in a way that gets it through um, the process very, very, very easily. Um, so, I mean, it's, it, it is definitely true that they had very different experiences and, um, but it was uh, difficult to come to the conclusion that there had been, you know, specific wrongdoing by any of the parties. And, um, you know, it's just, it's these, it's just very difficult because for, although there were allegations that of discrimination. There were also information that showed that 
uh, Gabrielle Gould at, at, uh, had assisted this business by helping them complete some of the forms and doing some of the uh, work to help them get established. And the same was true of the building commissioner. There was evidence that they had approved um, a temporary occupancy so the business could open while they were awaiting repairs of certain things. So when you have sort of that both, you know, mix of good and bad, it's hard, at least it was difficult for me to just to say definitively, this was strictly done because of, of racial bias. I have a question, Pamela. Do mm -hmm. they use that? Does I've not been in Hazel's. Does Hazel use that stage as an eating area when they don't have events? So it, it's um, it's unclear because, uh, and Jennifer might be able to weigh in. I think at one point the, that stage area, and it's very teeny tiny. It's a yeah. small little stage. At at one point it was um, described as a VIP sitting area that would be oh. open to the public. And if, if it were a VIP sitting area, then that would require a, a, yes. a state, would require a ramp, a ramp um, yeah. as opposed to only, because in the space and um, the DJ booth is off, well, off to one side, and then there's another raised platform where you, there could, and I'm trying to recall, there might, I think there might be more than one area on like seating area in that raised platform. Jennifer, can you remember? Well, we don't have to, this, yeah. this exactly is a great example of yep. Yep. how nuanced the code is yep. because it's really about how you control that space. So, so like the other the thing DJ, is, the I DJ know we need, space needed uh, to be accessible too. Yeah. Um, Pamela, before I know we need to close, can I have you for just a minute after everyone else leaves? Sure. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we need a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Need a second. Second. Okay, Elise. Saren? Yes. Tori? Yes, and goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Tori. Bye, Tori. Bye. 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 Thank you all. Ian. Yes. And Marty? Yes. And me. me. Yes. So, yeah, this was a tough meeting. There's a lot of stuff. I mean, but it, the question really wasn't our purview. Anyway, okay. Um, it's still time. We, um, I'll get to you all next month about next month. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Hang in there. Right. Hang in there, right. um, Myra. Thank you for your tough work there, Pamela. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. I got it. All right. I, we all have to leave. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm looking for the leave. There it is. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Pamela. Um, can you check the Zoom email that you have for me? Yeah. Because I'm not getting any Zoom notifications. Okay, let me. And that's look. why I've had so much trouble getting in. All right. I am going to. I think there might be a typo in my email. Yeah. So let me, I'm gonna look for a second. Because I'm going, you're getting the, the email messages from me, right, though? I'm getting your email messages, but I just don't get the Zoom, the Zoom invitation. Okay. And, and I get it from, I have another state meeting that I have, and mm -hmm. I get those all the time. Okay. Yeah, there, there probably is. I'm going to go to my webinars and look at this and go to the list, scroll down, save go down ytramsmith smith at gmail.com yeah that's it but i don't yeah. get them huh well you know this last time um ian um and elise both had 
uh, trouble with their uh, Zoom, and I actually resent their. I had Zoom resend their email. Uh, um, their but invite. But you resent mine too. And you still didn't get the. I didn't reason? get it. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. There's I something. will double. That's yeah. why I was saying let's check the. Yeah. Because I did not get it. All right. I will double check again. Okay. Uh, thank you. All right. <laughs> okay. Take care. This was Take a care. tough one. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.